Thank you for visiting Pastor Wyatt TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWyatt.com. White Beam, to me, is a, a very intriguing upset possibility. She should be four, five, six to one. Tracking trips with Pick 6 King, John Stetton. It's one of the best tools in horse racing for any level of player. It's your second set of eyes. Spotting troubled trips, betting angles, track trends. Horses to watch and favorites to fade. 10 fakes, ticket structure, and more. At Tracking Trips, you're a friend with benefits. Not a member? You must hate winning money. Join Tracking Trips now. Visit PassTheWire.com and we'll see you in the winner circle. Remember, nobody does it better. How's it going, everybody? Gio Setti with Pass the Wire TV. Back at you for the 2023 Haskell Stakes. Now this is a race, being a New Yorker who moved from New York down to the Jersey Shore, uh, I fully embrace this race every single year. Uh, I am not exaggerating by saying I probably have attended this race in excess of 25 times over the years. So I've seen them, I've played them, and I've lived them. Uh, very, very nice, intriguing field this year. Eight runners. Uh, as I always do for you, I am going to break down the race and offer my precise order of finish. This wasn't an easy handicap. Uh, lots to consider about a number of these horses. So, uh, give you a bit of a history so far. Uh, you know, for example, going back 10 years, Verrazano. Verrazano was a colt that failed in a Kentucky Derby. Uh, I believe he, he ran like 13th or 14th, if I can remember. And he went on to win the Haskell uh, by the widest margin ever, almost 10 lengths. Uh, another horse that came to mind was Good Magic. Uh, I don't know, about three or four years ago, uh, didn't win the Derby, uh, was a contender throughout the Triple Crown run. He won the, the Haskell in smashing fashion. Uh, Exaggerators, another horse that comes to mind. I, I had him that year big in the Santa Anita Derby in a slop, uh, failed in the Kentucky Derby, uh, made his presence felt throughout the Triple Crown, but won the Haskell in sparkling fashion. And then last year, one of the biggest scores I've had in a while, uh, if you want to make reference to it, you go back to my column. Uh, for Pastor Y, I've been writing columns for six years. Uh, now with the presence of video, I'm doing a lot more video than writing the columns, but you're still going to get columns from me. But anyway, last year's column and the Haskell from last year, uh, I crushed it. I was confident too. I had Cyberknife. I had the exacta over Tabor and the triple over uh, Jack Christopher. Now, Jack Christopher was the hot horse. Everybody was on going into the race, but I knew in my blood and bones he wasn't going to make the, difference, uh, the distance. And that's what you have to consider. Value your opinion, but absorb everything you have to absorb. Uh, because that horse last year was three to five, and I didn't have him in any one of my exactors. I knew he wouldn't. 
uh, last, uh, and he was a significant, significant underlay. I don't like underlays. I like overlays. So, uh, fresh off for that last year, and Cyberknife actually set a track record time for the Haskell. So, are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's break down. Of course, I got all my notes. Thorough handicap complete. Let's take it from one to eight. You'll get the feeling of who I'm loving, who I'm not loving as I go over it. And then at the end, of course, I'm going to give you that precise order of finish. And this wasn't an easy one. It was very difficult for various reasons. Okay? All right. Number one, go rocket ride. Now, this actually is a, a sharp colt, son of candy ride, West Coast shipper, uh, come back after a layoff and ran a sparkling race in the $100,000 affirmed. So you always like to see a, a, a colt performing well off of a layoff. Um, I think the horse is going to be sitting a pretty good trip in the race. Uh, tactical speed, not as fast as some of the others, but maybe in that catbird seat uh, on the rail. Mike Smith, amazing when you think about it. He's been around so long. He won this Haskell not only three times, but 22 years apart. 22 years apart. 94, 98, and again in 2020. So I think the horse is strong. I think he should be considered a contender. Is he going to ultimately be my top choice? No, but he'll make his presence felt in this race. That's the one. Go Rocket Ride. Number two is Awesome Strong. Uh, one of the real, real outsiders in a race, in my opinion. Now, always had a terrific nose for the wire. Winning in Florida, actually winning his first four starts. Win, 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 win. His numbers are sort of inferior to this group. Uh, he's got to prove he's grade one caliber. I don't even think he's grade two or grade three caliber. But have to respect the horse with a nose for the wire. Uh, even though I think he's up against this in a race. Comes into the race with a nice work over the track. Uh, I respect the barn. Uh, he got Batista on him. Like I said, he's four for five lifetime. But this is a massive test for this horse. I don't think he'll be there. He's actually one of my better bets to run last or next to last. That's awesome, strong. Probably be about 30, 40, or 50 to 1. Number three is Salute the Stars. Now, this horse is very intriguing, very interesting, and he seems to be at the top of his game even though he was a little mixed up in his last, uh, let me explain. So you got Joao Rosario up for Brad Cox, and Brad Cox has won this race the last two years with Cyberknife, who I had last year, and Mandaloon a few years ago. So he's looking to go three straight Haskells, Brad Cox. Um, you do get Joao Rosario in the saddle, big game rider. Uh, now this horse... His last, he breaks bad over the moment surface. So he's got to win over the track. Uh, this is in the Pegasus, 150,000 Pegasus. Breaks bad. But if you watch the race, wow. In a stretch, the horse makes up greater than five lengths, basically in the final three sixteenths. Uh, and he ran down King's Barnes uh, to win. So he's won three straight. He hasn't run a bad race yet. He's four for four in the exactors, winning three straight. The son of Candy Ride. Um, I can see this horse moving forward again. Uh, definitely a threat, a threat to win this. Because of Brad Cox, the way the horse is performing. And wow, if you look at his performance... Visibly impressive over the track, winning his last, coming into the race with a three-race winning streak. I just think that maybe the horse is going to come up a little short 
for, for my top two. This horse is going to be my third choice. Contender will be on my triple tickets, my super, my super effective tickets. And I'll talk a little more about the finish later on. But much respect for number three. Salute to the stars. Getting better with each race. Number four is Mage. We all know Mage, right? Kentucky Derby winner. Uh, you know what? The path of the horse, made in special, wins the Fountain of Youth, wins the Florida Derby, both at Gulfstream. Oh, excuse me. Second, uh, let me backtrack. Doesn't win the Fountain of Youth. <laughs> Doesn't win the Florida Derby. I'm sorry. Uh... We all know what he did in the Kentucky Derby. Sort of like the perfect trip, perfect setup. Do I think he's like a rich strike, one hit wonder? No. But I'm not entirely sold on him. Uh, his performance in the Preakness is something I saw coming. I knew he'd come up short in the Preakness. Uh, I think he's made for the distance, and he certainly has the, uh, you know, he's the son of good magic who won this race. Um, obviously a contender has performed over several tracks, something I like seeing. Um, but you know what? He's going to be a short price and I'm just not entirely sold on him being a spectacular horse. His buyers in the Kentucky Derby, fabulous, 105, the best buyer you're going to find for a three-year-old this year, still. But... Uh, you know, they say this This is sort of like a prep race for the Travis. I think he has a lot of work to do to win this race. Um, but contender, I'm sort of shorting him because I just think others in this race have a more dynamic approach leading to the race. Uh, is he capable of winning for those that want to back? Absolutely. But... Um, you know, other than the Kentucky Derby, and he made a big run in the Florida Derby, something I was impressed with, you know, uh, trying to uh, beat Forte, and Forte ultimately ran him down. Um, I had mixed emotions with this guy. Uh, I'm not going to have him on my tickets. I'm making a case against him because even though I don't think he's like Rich Strike, that type, I just think he he isn't dynamic. I don't think he's going to dominate many fields. He's got a tough task ahead of him. He should be sitting a good trip. There should be pace in front of him. Uh, nine furlongs coming over the Mammoth track for the first time. I don't know. I don't have that ray of confidence, especially after what I saw him, uh, the lack of performance in the Preakness, which was a paceless race. I understand. But he was beaten on a square soundly by National Treasure and Blazing Sevens. And, you know, I'm just not sold on him. I'll come back to him a bit later. Let's take a quick break and I'll be back <coughs> in just a minute or so. It is here, the big day, the day... Almost all of us in horse racing wait for Breeders' Cup Saturday. It looks like we're gonna see some really, really impressive races on Saturday. It starts with the Philly and Mare Sprint. Uh, one of my stronger opinions on the card is, is Goodnight Olive to start things off. I think she gets a perfect trip. Goodnight Olive, six in a row and a Breeders' Cup champion. We've got modern games going in the turf mile for Godolphin. Uh, the Godolphin and Aiden O'Brien horses we said on Pass the Wire TV all week long on the backside. Those two contingents stuck out from all the rest. Modern Games looking for a, a, a big race in front of him. Modern Games storming down the center of the court. Modern Games, a two-time Breeders' Cup winner. You bet he is. That is Rebels Romance, who in my humble opinion is one of Godolphin's uh, better chances this year. Rebels Romance is a very, very good looking Godolphin horse that can absolutely win this race. Rebels Romance is a must use. Rebels Romance, rolling on the outside, where the goddess makes her bid down toward the inside. Rebels Romance down the center of the course, has it close to home. Rebels Romance wins the turf over Stoney. 
got Flightline that they're putting in the best ever category. There's no question that the race he ran in the Pacific Classic is one of the best races we've seen any racehorse run ever. It is Flightline! It is mind-tingling, jaw-dropping, awe-inspiring, secretariat like Raiders Cup Classic win! He won it by eight legs on the wire! Legend himself, Frankie Dettori. Ciao, Frankie. Tutta posto. Tutta posto, yes, that's well. a good start. <laughs> so you, have, you, you haven't lost your Italian. Frankie Dettori, legend, world class jockey, one of the best ever to sit in the saddle, ambassador to the sport of kings. Meet Frankie during his fanfare like never before, only on Pass the Wire TV. Gentlemen, here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator exclusively on DRF Bets. Vino Rosso has taken the lead! And it's a vintage performance by Vino Rosso! Okay, Mr. Seti, back at you to run down the rest of the field. Let's start with number five, Tapit Trice. Now, so much to consider for this cult, about this cult. Uh, built like a tank. He's got these long, powerful strides. Uh, if you look at the path of this horse, now I, I really, really liked him at the Belmont Stakes. And he ran well. Was it his best effort? No. But he made a big, big, strong move, and he was very wide. Uh, I just think that, you know, he finished well. You know, the way that race panned out with Archangelo winning and Forte and Tapatrice coming strong, the stretch run was a little misleading. He certainly was built for the distance mile and a half, probably better than anybody. But I think cutting back now is going to do him really, really well. Of course, the son of Tappet, 1,300,000. Um, he's in the five hole. I trust Todd Pletch has got this colt ready again. Uh, has really not done anything wrong in his career. The Kentucky Derby was the only lemon, but he had a very rough trip. Uh, it just wasn't his day at Churchill. Um, ran well as a two-year-old. He's four for seven lifetime with two-thirds, one time out of the money. Uh, grade one proven, buyers ready. He's run a 94, he's run a 99, he's run that 100 at the Belmont Stakes. Todd Pletcher, uh, I think this is a good spot for Tappet Trice. I think he's going to have a nice setup this time. I trust Luis Sayas greatly. Uh, great, uh, Sayas won this race on maximum security just a few years ago. Um, you know... Horses that cost one million three hundred thousand as a yearling, they do big things. And the way he won the Bluegrass, if you go back to that race at Keeneland, 
you know, he exhibited the type of fight you want and that real strong, lengthy strides in, the, in his closing punch. And I, I'll tell you the truth, we haven't seen the best of this guy yet, you know. The Tampa Bay Derby, he just willed his way to win, closing down the field. You know, spotting the field 10, 15 lengths, we all know he's a slow starter. But that's his makeup. And one day, and it could be Saturday, this Haskell, he's going to put it all together. And he's going to run the entire field down. Uh, like I said, when you're bio-tested, fits with these grade one caliber. Uh, I see he runs a big race here. And it sets him up for an even bigger Travis. Uh, that's the five. Tap it twice. The six. How great is Nate? How great is Nate? Um, horse has a nose for the wire. Another one who won his first four races. He's five for eight lifetime. But it's the company he beat. He ran exceptionally well as a two-year-old. Has he developed as a three-year-old? Not really. They gelded him. Uh, I thought he'd show a significant improvement as a three-year-old, and he hasn't. Uh, tactical to some degree, inferior numbers. You know, some of the locals are going to play Paco Lopez on him because poor Paco wins all the time at Monmouth. He won't get one dollar of my betting wages. Uh, I like horses that win like he did to start his career. But his numbers, they just don't measure up to many in the field. Uh, he'd have to run a career best while three or four really faulted. So I'm going to toss him. That's the six. How great is Nate? And I'm hoping there's some underway money because people like to bet Paco Lopez. The horse should realistically be 30 to 1. I bet you the horse is going to be like 16, 17 to 1, maybe even less because of Paco Lopez. Seven. The two bottom horses are very, very interesting and considered contenders in this race. Extra a nail. Two turns for the first time. But I have much respect for a horse that... Wins at Keeneland, seven panels, ran him down in his maiden debut, ran a big number, a 92. Goes into an optional claimer for a hundred grand, runs big at, at, at Churchill Downs, sprinting. Then he goes to Ellis Park, and he wins like the wind blows. So this is a horse, a million three hundred fifty thousand dollars, son of into mischief, expensive. Uh, improving, a threatening presence, closes well. I didn't see much wrong with him. Uh, I like horses who are very versatile in their ways. Fourth race, fourth different track, travels well too. Uh, like I said, Ellis Park, Churchill, Keeneland, now Monmouth. Uh, working out at Saratoga, Stephen Asmussen, uh, you know, you got Tyler Gaffleone in the silks. I like him. I think he's going to make a run. But I, I, can he beat this field? It wouldn't shock me. But I think he's going to be more of a super effector, a triple threat. Uh, lots to like, but just a cut below. If he goes forward in his bias, he could be right there. Uh... Can't kiss all the boys, and you can't kiss all the girls. But this is a cult that, that's going to do some big things in his career. All right, that's the seven. Extra a nail. And two turns for the first time is essentially important. You're probably going to get four to five one odds with this guy. Uh, wow. You know, I like into mischief horses. And this one was an expensive one. But let's, let's go really expensive now and turn the page to the number eight, the bottom horse, Arabian Night. Now, talking about 
visibly impressive. Now, we all know if you follow the game, this guy was on everybody's radar for the Kentucky Derby early on. Last November, begins his career at Keeneland, seven panels, blows everybody away, 97 buyer, wins by seven and change. By the way, this is the son of Uncle Mo, 2,300,000. So you got some heavy hitters in, uh, you know, who were purchased for big time dollars here as a yearling. Three or four in the race. So this guy, 2,300,000, son of Uncle Mo, uh, like I started to talk about, wins at Keeneland at first asking. Comes back in January, Oakland Park, equally impressive, stretches out uh, in the slop, and wins going away at odds on. So if this, this horse wasn't hurt, he would have been a major triple crown threat. So now they lay him off for greater than six months. It's a lot to ask for a horse to win the Haskell after such a layoff. But Bob Baffert, who's won this race, what is it, nine or ten times? The horse is working like a diamond. Uh, six furlongs and 111 at Santa Anita. Seven furlongs and 124 and three. Seven furlongs and 125. It goes back to the middle of June. He ran six and 112. I like his works. I think he's fit. If anybody knows how to bring horses uh, to... To the Haskell at Monmouth Park, it's Bob Baffert from the West Coast. Um, he's going to be bet well. He made my grade. He could easily win this race on the front end. It's going to be a tough ask from the eight hole. There's a lot of speed inside of him. He doesn't need the lead. He could sit a comfortable second or third and still come up big. I trust Bob, and I trust this horse's progression. The layoff is a little scary. He makes my exact, and it will certainly be in my triple, but he's going to be my second choice. So, let's go over my complete order of finish. In a very interesting and competitive Haskell, and by the way, this is a race I have a history of crushing. I talked about some of the horses I've had over the years. I scored with Verrazano. I scored with Exaggerator. I scored with Good Magic. You could go back to my Past the Wire column on Good Magic or my Past the Wire column last year where I gave my followers an ice cold Exactor and Triple, Cyberknife, Tabor, Jack Christopher. And I didn't go near Jack Christopher on the win end. And he was three to five. So, with that said, I come up with this and you have to be decisive. Here's my order of finish. Number five, Tappy Trice. I have this vision of this big colt with his long, relentless strides, finally putting it all together and running a big race at the right time. If I get the half where I feel it's going to be somewhere in the area of 45, 46, I think this horse is capable with a perfect trip to run this field down. Second is eight Arabian, Arabian Night. I just finished talking about him. As sharp as sharp can be from the Baffert Barn. Tons of talent. Could win the race. Uh, I'll certainly put him in my exactors over Tapatrice as well. Uh, it's going to be close, but I, I can't see anybody approaching this race without using Arabian Night in your exactors or triples. Number three, my third choice, Salute to the Stars. For everything I said, this is Brad Cox's third year in a row where he could potentially win this race. Um, The horse came over the track powerfully and he broke bad. He gets a good ride. This horse moves forward. He's a a big threat to win this thing. I'm going to use him in exactors. I'm going to use him in triples. I wouldn't fault anybody using this in your multi-race wagering, using him on top. But he's my third choice here. Could be very close at the end. My fourth choice is go rocket ride. From the rail, breaking well, getting a good solid ride. Horse is in great shape. I think he sits a good trip. Capable of an upset here. I just like the others. They're more appealing, a little better than uh, go rocket ride. But 
Nothing against the way this horse is training. Next up, Extra Aneo. Again, very fit. Potential upsetter. Believe me, I was pulling hairs out of my head saying I'm going to put this guy fifth. He could be as good as second or third. I don't know if he could win the race, but uh, the horse is really training well. He's got to make the distance here. He's got to go two turns. Uh, but you may get a pretty good price on him. Next up is Mage. Now, why am I short in Mage? Eight horse field. Why is he my sixth choice? Of course, he could better my rating. He's a Kentucky Derby winner. And he has that big buyer then. But you know what? I knew he'd come up short in the Preakness. And I'm just not loving the whole scenario. There's so much dynamic that I listed before him. If he beats me, he beats me. I don't think the connection should say this is a prep race for the Travers. He's got a lot of work to do here. If he gets a fast pace and tap a tristone fire, an Arabian Knight uh, is used up early and salute to the stars don't fire, then yeah, he could win the race. But I'm shorting him here. I may put him in some of my bottom end superfectors. Rounding out the field, how great is Nate the six? Nice looking horse, but how great is Nate? Is Nate? He's not great enough to win this race, and he won't win this race. Uh, finally, the two awesome strong, across the board, inferior numbers. Like I said, he won his first four Gulfstream, weak buyers, major step up in class here. If this Florida bred wins this race, I'd be shocked. So my complete order of finish. 2023 Haskell, 5, 8, 3, 1, 7, 4, 6, 2. Let's do it. I'm looking to crush it again. If I'm precise and I have the, the winner, the exactor, and the triple, and the super, everybody makes money, including you. Obviously, because my top four or top five, and even with Mage, are legitimate contenders in the race, you just can't hug and kiss all the boys. You got to be decisive. And I'm going with 5831-7462. Thanks for listening. 2023 Haskell. It should be a fun day. Great, great, uh, great undercard. I will be in the Sky Tower in the press box at Mammoth, working, handicapping. I got some nice horses I like on the undercard. I will share them in the comments. Please, offer some comment. Let me know who you like. Let me know if you're making money with me. You should be. If you're absorbing, follow the script. And I'll see you next time, probably prior to the Travers, for the Whitney and the Alabama at Saratoga. You guys take it easy, and I'll see you real soon. God bless. Nobody does it better.